All right, we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Bootcamp Basics. So um, if you can, just go ahead and say hi. Let me know that you're here. And uh, we're going to get started in a few minutes. We always leave a few minutes for people to get into the webinar. Um, and we'll get going. I am working on uploading slides because, of course, right when I need it, I have tef technical difficulties. So um, we got our first ones up, but uh, we're going to start in just a couple minutes. Okay. Just a couple minutes. <clears throat> Usually we just wait three minutes, so uh, 6.33 we'll get going. Who do we have tonight? Jesse, we have Dawn. <clears throat> All right. And I know we're in the middle of, uh, I don't know if this affected a lot of people's uh, either ability or, or uh, desire to come. I know we have the storm going on, so um, we're going to dive in, and I want to make sure this gets to everybody. So we're definitely going to um, uh, provide the recording, um, especially to the Pierce Clinic, and I think we're just going to get it out. It's, it's, really, it's really important that we get this information out to people. <clears throat> All right. As you can see, I'm not at the clinic. I'm in a child's room as as you can see with the sticker behind here but uh i don't know maybe i'll stick with this kind of decoration from now on let's see slides are still loading so please be patient we'll take a break or not a break we'll um we'll talk for a minute while i'm loading the third set of slides when it's time to but that way we can get going with the content right away. <clears throat> the other problem I've been having, and this is really kind of frustrating, is I, I can't, I've tried this many times, so I just want you all to know, I think I'm going to switch to Zoom from now on. That way I can see your face, you can see mine, and if we wanted to, there can be even audio questions, which I think would be a lot better. Um, I know I've, I've been doing webinar for a while, but I think I think that it would be a better option. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll really work on, on getting Zoom going. Uh, we're going to start in about 30 seconds. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm just trying to make sure this, oh, yes, we got the last slides. Perfect. Actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and load the third one, and then I'll, I'll do the introductions. And then uh, uh, once the third set loads, since I really messed up so much stuff, um, then we'll get going. I want you to download something while I'm loading this. It's called um, Pillars. I want you to download this file. Uh, you should see it either in the chat or somewhere on the computer or on your phone. Um, these are the six pillars of health that we're going to be talking about in the boot camp. Now, this is new for a lot of you. Uh, it's new for a lot of you. And um, I think that's really important because you're going to see how to unpack all this information in a 30-day boot camp, um, which is going to be starting this weekend, actually. And uh, just got off the phone with um, uh, Berg CrossFit, and they are really excited to partner up uh, with us and start to get this information out. So let me... Um, no. No, 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 no. Okay. Of course, I uh, did something wrong again. I don't know how. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So hopefully you downloaded it, Pillars. Okay. If everybody got Pillars, then uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. So welcome to Boot Camp Basics. Now, this is um, a precursor to the 30-Day Extreme Health Boot Camp. I'm Dr. Chris Leninger. I work with the Pierce Clinic of Chiropractic, um, and I've been a, a professional speaker for long time. The boot camp, this boot camp, this 30 day extreme health boot camp is a culmination of about 11 years worth of work. Um, I've been building curriculums of build, build, building um, anatomy and physiology courses, health courses. Um, I have, I've trained trainers. I teach continuing education uh, across the country to doctors, to surgeons, to neurosurgeons, to uh, just general health classes. And we teach a lot at the Pierce Clinic as well. 
I love it. I love it. But, um, and I give full credit to my wife for this. She, um, she kept telling me, she goes, I don't think people are going to, to jump into the information the way you're presenting it. And I never understood what she was talking about. And she said, look, people, people need a goal. You need a goal to get to. And you, especially if you're going to push, uh, push people really hard. And, and so I thought about it and I put together this 30 day extreme health boot camp and I explained it to her. She goes, people will go for that. So I started sharing it and I'll tell you what, the goal of spending 30 days and diving in really deep to some information and some practical application to start to change and shift the, your, your health, not just one or two tips. I'm talking a top to bottom, um, uh, a complete upheaval of the way you do things, but not just doing things randomly. I'm talking about really understanding the way your body works and what you need in order to stabilize your body over time. And so um, this is what the 30 day extreme health boot camp is. Okay. Here, I'm going to start this, but I'm going to stop it and it's going to save my presentation. And while I'm explaining the pillars, I'm going to load the third one and then we're going to get going. And that way I don't have to stop once we dive into the material. Tonight's class is the second of three boot camp basics. Okay. It's the second of three boot camp basics. The first one was an overview of health, but I didn't go over the pillars and I really really should have. And so I'm going to make up for that tonight by going over the pillars of health. Um, and when you understand this, you're going to understand exactly what we're going to be building um, overall. And then on Saturday morning, we're going to St. Pete Running Company. And we are going to do a run on Saturday morning at St. Pete Running Company. Um, uh, but we're going to be talking about uh, fitness foundations. We're going to be talking about redefining fitness. But tonight we're talking about nutrition. Now, you may have heard some of this content before. This is basically eating perfectly without a plan. But I'm going to put it into a different context so you can see what we're really uh, building with the pillars of health. And by the time you get done um, with this 30-day extreme health boot camp, I think the pillars are going to... Um, uh, be some anchor points in your life that will not shake very easily. So here's how I want you to think about these pillars. Uh, first, I'll name them and, I'll, and then I'll explain them. So we have six main pillars of health. Um, hopefully you downloaded the file, but uh, the six main pillars of health are uh, nutritional saturation. We're going to be talking about this, this tonight. Nutritional saturation does not mean um, just changing your diet, eating a little more healthy. Nutritional saturation is completely saturating your body with all of the necessary building blocks you need in order to make a strong, healthy body and carry out any functions that you need. Um, so we'll dive more into that tonight. Physical discipline. This, this is fairly self-explanatory, but physical discipline is the act of um, engaging your body in activity every single day that keeps your body available for use for the things that you either are doing on a regular basis or plan on doing on a regular basis. Um, so physical discipline, you cannot be a weekend warrior. Uh, basically the, the definition of a weekend warrior is someone who does not train, does not use their body, does not put the time in, but wants to go out and act like they're fully capable of something uh, that they're, they're actually not. Um, another way to put it is there's a lot of people who wanna be an Olympic athlete except for the training that Olympic athletes go through you're not going to get there. And so you need to understand the, the, um, uh, how to build a, a, a pattern for physical discipline. Neurological clarity is absolutely essential. We talk about this all the time in the clinic, but we don't talk about all of it. Um, the main part we talk about is the clarity that comes from making sure there's no mechanical interference. And this can come from spinal misalignments, but there's a lot more to neurological clarity. One of them is chemical. You cannot have chemical interferences or hormone imbalances and have neurological clarity because all of those chemicals and hormones directly affect the way the nerves of the body works. And the brain controls everything that happens in our body. So anytime we want to have a healthy functional body, we must have clarity of every single type. And we must have a strong input into our brain, which means we need to make sure we're we immerse our body into um, basically a, a sensory overload. It sounds like a bad word, but um, as I describe it through the boot camp, you're going to understand it a lot better. Um, we should have chemical purity. Um, this is both from drugs and from our environment, and 
balanced hormones. And so it goes hand in hand with neurological clarity, but chemical purity is so essential. You cannot drug the body into health, but you can detox the body into health. And so um, if we are not careful about what we put into our body, we are going to basically create a cesspool environment inside our body that cannot actually attain or achieve what we hope for, which is a healthy, strong, and well-functioning body. So chemical purity is, um, is a, a rock-solid essential if you want uh, a, a healthy life, not just short-term, but long-term. Emotional fortitude. Um, I had a friend give me this term. And I thought it was the perfect, perfect term for what we're building here. Emotional fortitude is not just being tough. It sounds like tough when you hear the word, but it's more than that. Um, a lot of times when we experience things emotionally, we experience them in two different ways. Um, guys tend to trend towards boxing things up and compartmentalizing them. And when you do that, it means that you just operate in a drone-like fashion, but you don't really emote um, a, in a lot of ways. Um, uh, and, and that's not necessarily healthy, especially when it becomes a wall, when you wall up those, those emotions and they never ever come out, they never become expressed and they never become experienced. On the other side of this, and women tend to um, experience it more this way is more like emotional chaos or an emotional roller coaster and that's where your emotions rule you now i would actually argue that both of them are a version of your emotions ruling you um, but women tend to be more outwardly expressive and men tend to be more compartmentalized i know there's plenty of individuals men that, that are more expressive and emotive and women that tend to box or wall, um, but both of them are essentially unhealthy, men or women, it doesn't really matter. What we're going to be talking about is how to manage stress, how to manage um, a lot of the experiences in our life and a lot of our emotions in a healthy way, which there's, there's strengths to both of them. We should be able to experience the full range of emotion, men and women alike, um, but we shouldn't box them up in a way that becomes a compartmentalized, walled off part of our life. Instead, we should learn something called discipline. We're going to talk a lot about this in the boot camp where you can take everything you're experiencing and almost like packages, package it up temporarily and place it to the side so that you can start to make decisions using discipline and, and then be able to re-engage and experience all the emotions that go with it in a healthy way. And so um, we're actually going to be talking a lot about emotions in this boot camp because emotional chaos or, or emotional boxing, both of those lead to erratic mental and erratic physical um, problems. And so your health is actually dependent on a very healthy emotional environment. And the last one is mental acuity. Mental acuity. And I'm going to repeat this a lot. So, I mean, if you're not getting this the first time, you will get it by the end, I'm sure. Uh, I, I promise you. Mental acuity is not just being sh sharp, being smart, or being quick-witted, which is what it sounds like. Mental acuity is having a right understanding of how your body is, a right ability to be able to filter through information in proper context, which is why I hate things like Facebook, because everybody just blurts out facts, but there's no real context to the conversations. Um, and then the third is to have a right assessment of yourself. And that is so important, a right assessment of yourself. And so if you understand where you're starting from and you understand what you're capable of, you can make a very linear change from where you are to where you want to be. But if you don't have a good perspective of where you are and you don't understand where you're um, uh, what you're capable of, then you're basically going to make a bunch of erratic decisions and your health journey is going to look like um, uh, basically a tornado. You're not going to make any progress. You're going to spend five years dieting and trying all these, you know, gyms and uh, 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 boot camps, or you're going to sign up for, you know, Sean T's, uh, whatever it's called, kick in the butt fitness. I, I don't know, beach body online, something like that. And I'm not saying they're bad, but you're going to, um, you're going to struggle making real sustainable progress. So think of it like a table. Like if you had a table with six legs, if you had lost one or two legs, you'd still be okay. Like that table would still stand. If you lost three legs, it would become compromised, but a three-legged um, uh, structure is actually a strong structure still. So a lot of people are, are compromised in 
in multiple areas. A lot of people maybe don't exercise at all, so they're, they completely lack physical discipline. Maybe they don't have neurological clarity, um, and and maybe uh, and maybe there's uh, not a lot of emotional fortitude or not good mental acuity. But they're strong emotionally because of past experiences. They don't really put a lot of toxins in their body, and they do eat pretty well. Well, you're going to have a person that's relatively healthy. At least you're going to see that on the outside. But it's not the strongest you can be. But I, I, I'm telling you, if you lose more than three of these pillars, if, if, if you are compromised in more than three of these areas, it's nearly impossible to be a healthy person. And if you have all six fully intact, it's nearly impossible for you to get sick or hurt. Okay? I'm telling you, if you build a strong structure and a strong foundation for your health, you're unshakable. And so what I want to talk about tonight is nutritional saturation. Okay? And I hope this is interesting, especially for those of you who are new, but the pillars are new to the boot camp, and I've never put it together this way. And when you understand this, you're going to be able to assess, like if things aren't going well in your, your health or your life, uh, you're going to be able to start to assess where the breakdown was and fix it. And when you fix it, you're going to get the benefit of it. And it's going to be very logical. It's going to be very expected. A lot of people just try things. Oh, I heard this new fad. I heard this new. I heard this new uh, diet came out. I heard this new exercise program is really good. What does that have to do with anything? The question should be: do, Is it in line with the way my body works? And if I apply it, um, will I get the benefit of uh, applying it? So let's let's dive in. I think I think all my slides are good. Let's see. We're good. Sweet. Here we go. So most of the content here is taken from um, uh, the Eating Perfectly Masterclass. This is uh, a lot of it's from the Eating Perfectly Without a Plan. But I hope to um, uh, skim through a few things that I do normally, but really um, focus on nutritional saturation. I want to extract more of that out of this content. So, so for those of you who have seen this before, it will seem familiar, but Let's. I want to contextualize it because I'm trying to get your that the the six legs, the six pillars strong. Okay, so um, I I introduce myself. Um, the by the way, I hope I hope when you get this replay, you forward this to other people because people need help in these areas, and I want this to uh, make a big difference. I'm going to put this up on Facebook in the 30 Day Extreme Health Boot Camp. Uh, page and I'm going to put it on my website as well. I'm going to start archiving a lot of these recordings on the website, except for the ones in the boot camp because we we need people in the boot camp. All right, I love this quote. Um, this is so important. I'm going to cover this quote probably every time I do a webinar. Um, it's from Ralph Waldo Emerson, and he said this: "As to the methods, there may be a million and then some, but principles are few. The man who grasps principles can successfully select his own methods." The man who tries methods, ignoring principles, is sure to have trouble. Okay, and I say this every time. If we try to do the fad, if we try to do the diet plan, if we try to do um, the, uh, the tips and the tricks as opposed to understanding the anchoring principles of how our body works, uh, we're going to flounder. We're going we're gonna to bounce all over the place. We're going to go over the principles of nutrition because when you understand those anchor points about how it works, um, the chaos goes away and you start to make some real traction. Um, I, I, I put this slide in here for a story. I actually want to tell a, a different story. Um, I had one person go through the Eating Perfectly Masterclass, and um, she went through two or three of the first classes. And after two or three of the first classes, she she applied exactly what I said. I, I basically two main things. I told her to do um, intermittent fasting and eat what she craves. And she looked at me like, are you kidding me? I can't believe you're going to tell me to eat what I craved. She was trying to diet for five years. And she goes, one of my main problems is I eat what I crave. And, and that's why, uh, that's why I'm overweight. She was, she was significantly overweight, and, but she was getting really discouraged. And I said, I'm not saying eat anything. I'm not. I'm not saying eat candy or ice cream. But if you crave chicken, eat chicken. If you crave an orange but not a carrot, eat the orange. If you crave a salad, but you don't crave the rice, eat the salad. Uh, make sure it's he healthier food, but eat only what you crave, and then do intermittent fasting. She lost 28 pounds in in 30 days. 28 pounds in 30 days. But more than that, her energy was through the roof. 
um, her mental clarity was coming back and she was getting very encouraged because she was seeing legitimate results, not just in her weight, but in her actual health. So what she was doing is she was restoring nutritional saturation. What she was doing when she was eating what she was craving is anytime she did eat, she, um, <clears throat> she was fueling her body with uh, the foods that her brain was telling her to go get. Okay, and I explained this process to her and I'm gonna explain it to you, but she was focused on seeking out nutrients that her brain unconsciously was saying, go get that food. And because I was giving her permission to eat what she craved, she obeyed her brain's signals, which were her cravings. And the second side of it was because she was intermittent fasting at the same time, fasting is very good for detoxification. Intermittent fasting is a little bit of an easier way to do it. And so this is going to be your homework. You're going to, I'm going to tell you the same thing at the end of tonight is to focus on um, intermittent fasting and eating what you crave. And I think you're going to start to see some changes. And if you've gotten off track, you're going to start doing it again. Okay. You're going to get back on track and you're going to apply these. So when she was intermittent fasting, she was going uh, with these short little bursts. Um, uh, most, I think it was, at, she was at least doing it four days a week where she would go about 12 to 16 hours without food. And so she had this window of time somewhere between uh, two and six hours where her body was in a fasting state. And when you're in a fasting state, you're, you're detoxifying. So she was increasing her chemical purity while maintaining nutritional saturation. So she was getting more of the nutrients she needed and getting the gunk that she had put in before out. You see what I mean? So she was fueling and cleaning, fueling, cleaning, fueling, cleaning, and naturally her weight just fell off. So that's why I'm telling this story for this one. Um, I'd, I'd like to change it up for the context, but this one is so key. So um, I've told you my backstory. I used to eat American diet. I don't anymore. Every, I'm going to skip uh, my backstory because I really want to get to the meat of the content. I want to help explain what, uh, what I do, but I'm going to explain it in a way that you can understand very, very well. So let me fly through all this. Okay, one of the first principles, and remember, we're going back to Ralph Waldo Emerson's quote, we're going to be talking about principles, not methods, but one of the first principles of nutrition is that your body is nothing but dust, repackaged, and repurposed. Nothing but dust, okay? And what I mean by that is, um, it, you've probably heard the phrase or the quote, it's a Bible verse, from dust we, uh, you came into dust you shall return. Well, that is a very, very literal phrase. And here's how. Basically, <clears throat> um, let me see. Let me pull up my nifty little white pen real quick so I can show you how this works. Okay. From dust you came. When you um, eat. You are eating food that comes directly from dust because the dirt of the earth down here contains all the nutrients that are now inside of your body. The goal of eating is to get the best stuff that's in the dirt in the earth into your body. However, we typically do not eat dirt. So this is how it really works. We don't just eat the dirt. We eat the stuff that comes in the dirt. So. Uh, what we do is we plant a seed in the ground. And when we plant a seed in the ground, that seed starts to sprout and it pulls into itself through its root system, the soil, right? It pulls in pieces of dirt, but it's really pulling in the micronutrients. So you look over here, these are micronutrients. They're little elements, magnesium or vitamin E or vitamin K, Things that um, uh, are found in the ground, basically it's going to be our raw elements, but when we plant something in the ground, what happens is we extract those micronutrients into the stalk and send it up to make the plant out of it. And so what was once in the earth now is packaged in a fruit or a vegetable or a seed or a leaf or a stalk or the root system itself. It was here, now it's here, but it's repackaged in a different way. Now this stuff's really good to eat. 
So what, if we have a nutrient here and it ends up in here, then when we eat it, it ends up inside of our body and we go through this digestive process to break down those, what we call a macronutrient, which is the big stuff we eat, into its little micronutrients. We break it down and then once it gets in our body, we build it back up into a part of our body. So for example, uh, yesterday I ate a bunch of apples. I probably had like six apples yesterday. Well, right now, part of my body is part apple because I just ate the apple. So I digested them, I broke them down, and now Chris is also apple Chris, okay? But you don't see any apples popping off of me or growing out of my skin. And it's because all the nutrients that were packaged inside that apple were completely obliterated, broken down into their tiniest little parts. And then my body is rebuilding and it's taking different, uh, selecting a few of, of those and it's saying, hey, uh, we're only gonna be using these nutrients, but we're gonna put them together, and that's gonna be a brand new little element or a new piece of my body. And so my body now has a new structure made out of the nutrients found in an apple. So I'm part apple, but you don't see an apple, you just see Chris. So the same, is, same with you, the meals that you've eaten in the past, that's what you're made out of. Now, if you've been eating junk food, that's what you're made out of. And if you've been eating healthy food, that's what you're made out of. And it all starts from the first nutrients that you eat. And, and you know, from dust we came, it all came from the dirt, but it gets repackaged, repurposed, sometimes multiple times over. Sometimes it's from the dirt to the plant, from the plant to the pig, from the pig into the bacon that we eat, which becomes a part of us. So you're part bacon, but that means you're part pig which means you're part plant, which means you're part dirt. It's all true. It's just the nutrients just kept repackaged, repurposed up the new food chain. It's not like a pig is made out of just nothing. It has to be made out of something and it's made out of what you ate last or it ate last. <clears throat> so, um, whoops, these slides are doubles. Let me pull up the next set of slides. And uh, shoot me a comment. Is this making sense? Principle number one, from dust you came and dust you shall return. Is it making sense? I hope so. Now, you also can't count calories. Principle number two, uh, you can't count anything. Let's, the principle really is there is nothing in your body you can count. Um, I, I, I hate to break it to you, but there, we spend way, way, way too much time counting, counting, counting what we're putting into our body as if we have a clue, and we don't. And I'm, go, I'm jumping right to this slide um, because I really want to get the principle down. Um, it's more important what you absorb than what you consume, okay? So in this example, um, if you eat a banana and you put that banana in your mouth, from mouth all the way out the other side, it is not a part of you yet. It's inside the container of you, but it's not a part of you. You see, when you eat something and you chew it and you swallow it and it goes into your digestive tract, at that point, um, at that point, it's in the process of being broken down. But if it doesn't get absorbed into the bloodstream, it doesn't get made into anything. It just continues to pass all the way through the tube of the digestive tract and it comes out the other end. And so if you eat a banana and you just consume it, it goes into the digestive tract and it doesn't get absorbed. It leaves the body as waste and what you ate accounted for nothing. Okay. Um, I'm sure a few of you have gotten sick and I'm, I'm look through this whole thing. I'm going to be really blunt because you have these experiences, but you need to understand them. If you ever have, uh, if you ever, um, become sick and vomit a lot, or you have a lot of diarrhea, it's your digestive system clamping down, refusing to, um, absorb anything. And so it expels it out one side or the other to get it out of the system and clear the tract. Okay. At that point, you've consumed something that then gets expelled. It's all waste and you're not nourished by it. Okay. But if after the food has been digested, it gets absorbed into the bloodstream. At that point, it becomes available for use. Those nutrients are now available to be made into building blocks for your body. And so, you know, going from our digestive tract into your bloodstream, that's the smallest those nutrients will ever be. 
And so you want to, when we talk about nutritional saturation, we need to focus on absorbing the most amount of healthy nutrients we can that will help fuel our body and build us stronger. So instead of a banana, if I eat a bunch of Twinkies, right? I mean, just nasty Twinkies. These things are so gross. But if you consume them, I better hope my gut is healthy enough to expel all of it quickly. I do not want to absorb that because I don't want to be made out of Twinkies. But if I have a really healthy, high quality salad, you know, with, you know, maybe some chicken on it, maybe no meat at all, a bunch of other vegetables, um, maybe some like oil and vinegar, things like that. I want to break that down. I want to consume it. I want to bring it into the digestive tract. I want my digestive tract to break it down as best it possibly can so that I can get a bunch of those nutrients inside my bloodstream and start to nourish my body because I want to be made out of that healthy salad that has a ton of good building blocks, a ton of good nutrients to make me stronger. And so a good salad that I both consume and through, because I have a healthy gut, I absorb means I will have a healthier body and brain because of nutritional saturation. I hope this is making sense. And that's one very, very important pillar. Chemical purity is just as important. See, chemicals don't just talk about um, like drugs and toxic stuff. It can also be having too much of the wrong thing. Okay, if you're if you're, um, uh, for example, if you're eating a bunch of cookies, it's Christmas time almost, so be careful of this one. But let's say you eat a bunch of cookies, um, you want to be chemically pure. Those those cookies are going to have a bunch of stuff you don't need, and if your body absorbed too much of it, that's a problem. And so part of of the the cleanliness of my body is my ability to get out the bad. I need effective ways to get the bad stuff out and get the good stuff in. So chemical purity and nutritional saturation, they go hand in hand and almost balance one another. By the way, throw in the comments, is this cool in this context? Is this making some sense that we're building on, on the pillars of health? Let me know. I'm going to keep going. All right. So I'm going to skip anything about calories but basically if you understand this principle of consumption versus absorption um, then you'll understand this really quickly if these bananas have 200 calories in it but all the bananas don't stay if some of the bananas come out the other side that means that if there's 200 here and a hundred come out that means only a hundred calories were absorbed and those are the only ones you need to worry about but no one has a clue how much is coming out the other side so if you count calories going in, but you don't count how many are coming out, you might as well quit counting how many are coming in because your math is wrong. That's it. So I'm not even going to go into calorie counting. I'll do it another time. Um, the main role of the brain is to do this. <clears throat> the main role of the brain is to make sure that we find out how much we need, how much of any nutrient that we need, and find out get it and then get it. that's nutritional saturation so let's see um I, this one is supposed to have lungs over here and liver and stomach over here and uh, this bone here, but basically all the parts of your body have different levels of needs. Okay, each one of them is uh, independent in in how much of any specific nutrient that you need. If I'm starting to break up, I'm so sorry. Um, don't I see that? Um, this storm is getting a little strong. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Oops. <clears throat> yeah, it is the weather. Um, it, look, uh, this should continue to record effectively. There will be a replay, so if anything doesn't come through. I'm also, I'm not, when I um, put up the replays, I'm going to put them on YouTube because one of the things I found is that when the webinar um, sends replays, it sends them, um, 
sorry, there, there I am. It sends the replays in a way you can't fast forward, but if you've watched half of it and missed the second half, that's very frustrating. So I'm gonna download it and put it onto YouTube, and that way, if you missed any specific part, you can go to that part and, and fill it in. Because I want you to get meat and potatoes here and learn how to apply it. Look, this boot camp, the, I love this. By the way, I just just a little caveat real quick. The reason why I did it as a boot camp is I a lot of times when I teach, I'm a little more gentle. Um, but I, I, I'm just going right for the stuff that matters. And I need you to take it very seriously. And I need to take yourself very seriously as well. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to send you all the initial self-assessment. If you are interested in maybe doing this boot camp, um, I, I'm going to send you this assessment. And I want you to answer this honestly. It's going to be very revealing. These questions are going to be a little hard to answer, um, not because they're challenging questions, but it's because it really makes you look inside. And and I want you to, I want you to be honest. So if you're interested in it and you're willing to take a look, and this is we you know we talked about mental acuity. This is making sure you have a right assessment of yourself. I want you to answer honestly, and these are not like yes no questions, and they're not scale questions. They are written out questions because I want you to write it out for yourself. And if you really want to take it another step, and I'll, I'll uh, I think it's written on there, um, share it with somebody who you know will support you, and ask them if you've been given an accurate assessment of yourself. Make sure it's somebody who cares about you and you know cares about you so that when they, if they give you an answer, you don't like take offense by it because they're very revealing questions. Um, but it is a way to really start growing. Um, and it's not about the six pillars. I'm also gonna put together a six pillar assessment so you can give us get a bit of a self-assessment about where you're at. But this one's more about you, how you function, what you really want, where you're really at and where you need to go. So <clears throat> back to all this, um, every part of your body does have uh, different needs. And so your brain is collecting information about each and every one of those, um, of those needs. And so as it collects information, it builds a bit of a shopping list. And so let's go, let's go through this whole process um, really quick. We're gonna start with the humerus bone. And let me see, I think I can put my, Oops, there we go, I'm on the other side now. We're gonna start with the humerus bone. In this example, the humerus bone should have calcium about that high, but because uh, in this example, the calcium has been depleted, and so the humerus bone needs to send information to the brain about how much calcium is in it, and it's basically saying, hey brain, um, I need some calcium. Well, your brain responds really well and says, all right, well, if you need calcium, um, let me go ahead and take an inventory of everything we need in the body. And so the different parts of our body are going to talk to our brain and create a bit of a shopping list. And so the brain knows, well, one of the things we need is calcium. And it always looks in the body first. So if you had excess calcium because you're nutritionally saturated, a lot of times when a need comes up, it's kind of like having you know, um, a, a supply closet. You're like, yeah, we weren't using this. We were just keeping it for later because you're nutritionally saturated. And so you probably hear the wind howling. It's getting kind of crazy over here. Um, but the, um, the brain will always try to see if there's any reserves inside the body. And if it has it, it doesn't need to get it. And this is why people can fast for extended periods of time. It's because you don't actually need to be dependent on food every meal or even every day. If you have good stores of, of these nutrients inside your body, um, you can go quite a bit of time without food and still function at very, very high levels. But when you deplete the storage and then you also have needs, that's when you start to need to get food or nutrients from the outside, outside of your own body. And that's why we eat. You see, the purpose of eating is to maximally nourish your body. That's one of the other principles. The purpose of eating is to maximally nourish the body. It's not just to nourish it to meet the current needs, but also to build a great storage of, of available nutrients in case other needs arise. And so you can meet those needs even before you eat. Your body is so robustly healthy. It's so saturated with high quality nutrients. You don't even need to eat. You could have massive needs and your, your brain's going, look at that. 
we have all this all this storage just ready to go at any time. So that's why I use the word nutritional saturation. We want to be saturated with the good stuff, but clear of the bad. And so um, when it gets this shopping list, right, all of these nutrients are the ones that are needed. The brain's going to go, let's go find some. But we're going to reduce the example just down to calcium so you can kind of understand the process of the brain. So the calcium, when we need calcium, one of the things your brain creates is a craving. And this is a signal that the brain sends off and we feel it in our bodies when we go, hmm, I really want this thing. Well, that feeling of really wanting a thing is actually your brain changing your physical senses to go get something from the outside, but it's not a random something, it's very specific. So what happens is um, when you eat food, let's say uh, in this example, you have eaten um, a little of each of these foods. You've eaten almonds, you've eaten lemons, you've eaten cheese, you've eaten figs, you've eaten broccoli, and my, my little person is covering the last one, but you've eaten all this stuff before. Well, um, your brain remembers all the nutrients that are in there. So in this example, there's only four main foods that even have calcium in them um, of, of any substantial amount. It would be almonds, it would be cheese, it would be broccoli and figs. Well, your brain will be okay with any of them. And what's gonna happen is when you're craving a specific type of food, the foods that have the nutrients you need will appeal to you more. And this is why you sometimes crave some things at one point and don't crave them at others. You crave some things at one point and don't crave them at others. Um, yeah, power's going out, okay. Yeah, I will send the link if any of you end up losing it, but I'm gonna keep uh, finishing up so that it's, it's recorded and available um, for tomorrow. So if I lose you, um, I'll make sure to get it to you. Hopefully I don't lose power before the end. If so, I'll redo it, I promise. All right, so um, so all these foods would be more appealing. Now your brain is always gonna go for the best of the best, which means in this case, one of the things that's gonna happen is it's going to select the thing that has the highest concentration of calcium. So you can eat the least amount of food, but get the most amount of the nutrients you need. And so that's why there's a little target on here is your brain will naturally target the best option if it's available. Now, if almonds aren't available, it's gonna go for the second best. So it's probably gonna go for cheese or maybe broccoli, one of the two, because these still have a good amount of calcium um, for the amount of food, but maybe not the best. But let's say it's like a mediocre amount. You'd actually have to eat quite a bit of figs to get the same amount that almonds would provide. You could eat less almonds, but get more calcium, but you'd have to eat more figs to get the same amount of calcium. So you're putting more than is necessary inside your body if you eat food that's less than ideal for the cravings you have. Um, we do not want a diet that looks like this, a, 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 a bunch of options that look like this. It's just not a, a good, a good um, uh, uh, set of options because it doesn't provide calcium. So let's say you're to eat milkshakes. Let's say milkshakes was your one source of calcium. You'd have to eat a lot of milkshakes to get a decent amount of calcium to make your bones strong. But by the time a bunch of unnecessary calories, probably a bunch of toxins, you're probably going to gain a lot of weight. So you may have stronger bones. You also have a bigger body. And that's not what you want. You want a lean, healthy body that's saturated with the good stuff, but doesn't have the bad. And this is, you know, it's it's funny that we just say, well, don't eat fries, they're bad for you. Well, technically no, fries are potatoes. Potatoes are gonna have some nutrients in it. So if you eat fries, guess what? You're gonna be somewhat nourished. You're not gonna be well nourished, but you're gonna be somewhat nourished. And the only point of eating anyway is to nourish your body. So the only reason why you crave anything is because you have needs. But if you try to fulfill these needs with things like donuts and hot dogs and, and milkshakes, you're really going to be struggling for um, to meet the, that nutritional saturation, and you're going to be really compromising that chemical purity. You are not going to be chemically pure. <clears throat> so we, if once we eat the um, almonds, we selected almonds, we eat the almonds, we chew up the almonds, right? When we chew the almonds, our taste buds send signals right up to our brain to tell us if those almonds even had calcium in them. So when a food tastes really good, 
the way it's supposed to work, barring junk food. But when you eat natural foods, when they taste really good, it's because it really has a lot of the nutrients that you need. It has a ton of them. And so it tastes good to confirm, hey, you are on the right track. You are fulfilling those nutritional needs. Keep going. Keep eating until I tell you to stop. Have you ever eaten something? And this is kind of rhetorical, but have you ever eaten something where you eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, and then you're like, I don't want any more, but I'm hungry, but I don't want any of that. It's actually your brain saying, I've had enough. You've eaten more than enough to meet the needs that I was telling you to go get. And so you might crave something else, but you sure don't want any more of that. And the flavor of it actually goes down, even though it's the same exact thing. It's because you've already fulfilled the nutritional need of what would come from that food that you were eating. So your taste is actually gauged based on nutritional need. It's very cool. Now, the purpose of digesting is to break food down from a macronutrient, like we see here, to a micronutrient, right? From dust, plants are made. Plants could be eaten by animals and animals eaten by animals and animals eaten by us, or we could just eat the plants. But no matter what stage of the um, food chain that we pick up that food, the goal of eating is to consume it, which is taking a big chunk off, chew it, digest it, and break it down to its tiniest parts, which is the same parts that were found in the dust in the first place. This is so cool because it's like the life cycle of a nutrient, basically. And then once it gets into our body, we build it back up into something totally new. And if something was to eat us, hopefully nothing does, but if something was to eat us, guess what? They would break it down, digest it into tiny little parts and rebuild it into whatever they are. So don't get eaten. You should be the end of the line. Now, once um, uh, the, so in, in, back to our example with the almond, right? Um, once it's digested, we should absorb the calcium. And once we absorb it and it's in our bloodstream, that's the first time you're actually nourished. So everything up until this point, there's no nourishment. Once it's in the bloodstream, now we can make it into something. And your brain is so cool because your brain doesn't just put it anywhere. Your brain knows where the need started. And so if you started off with a humerus bone that was depleted in calcium, then the first thing that your uh, brain is going to do is take that calcium that's now available in the bloodstream, send it to the bone, and help build it into stronger bone. And now we have nutritional fulfillment. And if you have extra calcium, maybe it stores it somewhere else, maybe some in the muscle for later or somewhere else. Well, now we have nutritional saturation. That is the goal of every nutrient, though. And I can't just tell you, hey, write down the nutrients you need. You might write down 10, maybe 20 at most. But if if you actually took a look at what your body needs, it's everything. It's all of them in different quantities. So there's there's just a ton of vitamins and minerals your body needs um, in order to be healthy and strong. You are obligated to go get all of them, and you don't even know where you're starting from. And that's why I eat, um, because it starts with the brain and it ends with the brain, and that's where nutrition really starts. You see, when we have a nutritional need, that means a part of our body is deficient in something that it needs, we get a craving, just like we explained. The craving is a signal saying, go get this particular food, not go get any food. It's also not hunger. I want to very clearly specify, it does not mean hunger. It really does mean a craving. Hunger is my stomach is empty and I want to fill it up. Craving is I need something specific and I better go meet that need. So we crave something specific. When we eat it, we should be selecting the food based on the craving. We need to select the food that we crave because the craving is based on the need, right? Now, this may not be working for you yet, but it will in time as we fix this. We confirm the food. We confirm that we ate the right thing um, by our taste. This is when it tastes really good, but we know it's not junk food and it's not altered. It's natural food that tastes really good. It's because it has nutrients that we need in it. That's the confirmation. We digest the food, which means breaking it from a macronutrient to a micronutrient. We, we break what was built up down. And then once it's broken down, we build it back up. And then, but we do that by placing it in our body where it needs to go. So it can float freely throughout the body and get repackaged to be delivered to different parts 
um, but it's all controlled and coordinated by your brain. If all of that happens well and the need, the original need is met because it's placed where it needs to go, then we end up with satisfaction, which is that feeling of feeling healthier, stronger, more vibrant, more clear headed. Um, uh, we just feel well. Okay. Joel, I'm sorry if you lost me. I'm, I'm just going to keep going because I think everything's a little crazy right now. Um, so that is the normal nutrition cycle. And that is how nutrition works inside the body according to anatomy and physiology. I just find it funny that most of the time when people give out diets, they go, I'll tell you what you need to eat. You don't even need to select your food. I'll select your food for you. But they don't have a clue what your nutritional needs are. They don't have a clue what your body's craving and when it's craving it. They don't even know if what you ate was digested which means it was consumed, but it, they don't even know if it was absorbed. So they keep telling you to keep eating what they tell you. They don't have a clue. They literally don't have a clue if you're actually fulfilling those needs. They might say, stop eating junk food. I agree. But um, we got to get to the point where you don't need someone to hold your hand to not eat ice cream when you shouldn't eat ice cream. And if you do choose to eat ice cream, it's your choice. You get to live with the consequence. So you don't need to complain about it. You don't need to make excuses about it. You need to change it. And if you refuse to change it, you got to stop complaining. And this this is where it gets into a little more of the boot camp. It's like, why, why are you complaining about exactly what you're doing to yourself? Now, if you don't know these things, and that's why I'm trying to break it down, is so now you know. But if you don't know these things, then it's hard to make the changes. Once you start knowing these things, it takes away the excuse. And and you can complain, but I mean, how many complaints does it take to get healthier? Because as far as I'm concerned, you can complain for the rest of your life. It's not going to make the change. But you making the change is what makes the change. And that's a decision that you and you alone make. So let me see. Um, <clears throat> so that is the main um, main principle that we're talking about is um, if you want to eat right, eat what you crave. And that's kind of the final principle of this whole whole thing. Eat what you crave, not because I think you should eat junk food um, or or eat the, the candies that you're, you're thinking about eating or Christmas comes around and everybody has Christmas cookies and I think you should eat it. But just understand that if you don't crave it, why'd you put it in your mouth? If you did put it in your mouth, why are you complaining about it? I mean, I'm, I'm saying these things because I hear every excuse under the sun at my clinic, every, every one. And, and we got to get to the point where we just go, I take full responsibility for my actions and I take full responsibility for my changes. And when you do those two things, you make serious progress. Okay. I have never, ever, ever in my life made a, a, a serious progress without taking responsibility. So we have to start there. A couple things. <clears throat> couple things. Um, number one, to summarize everything, I hope that this really helps you understand how this content and eating what you crave starts to strengthen your nutritional saturation and strengthen chemical purity because um, you're not putting junk in, but you are fully satisfying the needs of your brain accurately. You're doing what your brain needs. But the question is now, how do we apply it practically? Because if we don't have practical application, then it's a great theory that you get to go talk about, but you don't get to see the changes from. So I'm going to go all the way back to the first story. And that's the woman who um, lost 20 pounds in 30 days. I told her to do two things. I told her to intermittent fast at least four days a week and to eat what she craves. Now, I want you to do something. I want you to establish a goodie basket. And this does not mean treats, okay? The goodie basket means um, put some parameters or some boundaries around what you're going to eat and make a decision ahead of time that this is all that you're going to eat, okay? If it's junk food, soda, chips, cookies, candy, um, gosh, uh, uh daily pancakes. I, I mean, I just want you to get a rough idea of if it's junk food, if it's packaged food, if it's stuff like that, you're not going to eat it. But you are going to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, some healthy meats. Um, you can eat 
and and I'm not I'm trying not to get too strict. Once we get into the boot camp, we'll get a little more strict. But even if you just do this, it's going to work, right? Um, healthy rices, okay? Organic pastas. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, you can ask me later about some other ones, but you are gonna, you will eat whole healthier foods. And, and that's what you're going to select from. Then within what's in your goodie basket, your goodie basket is all the good healthy food. Within that goodie basket, let me throw my full camera on. <clears throat> Oops. Um, there we go. Okay. Within that goodie basket, um, you're going to eat as much as you can of the things that you crave when you crave them. But uh, you are not going to eat the other stuff, even if you crave it. And if you do that, if you establish some good boundaries and you stick to it, then I want you to eat what you crave. And I think it's going to be very interesting because I think one day you're going to probably crave apples. And you're going to be like, I don't know why. I just crave apples. But Dr. Chris told me I got to go eat apples. So I'm going to go eat apples until apples don't taste good. Um, if you crave chicken, eat chicken. If you crave chicken for breakfast, eat chicken for breakfast, okay? If you eat, if you crave Oreos for breakfast, do not eat the Oreos. But I want you to um, really start applying this in this way. Eat what you crave with the food that's within your goodie basket and cut all the other stuff out. But eat literally as much as you can until you don't, it doesn't taste good anymore. I'm, I want you to strive to achieve to the best of your ability. It's going to take some time to get it really good, but I want you to strive for nutritional saturation. Okay. On the other side of it, I want you to strive towards chemical purity. And we're going to take some baby steps towards that by um, applying intermittent fasting. And so intermittent fasting is literally not eating anything, but just drinking water for a set amount of time. And it's usually more than 10 hours. Now at night between dinner and breakfast, typically um, you have um, a small fast. And that's why we call breakfast break breakfast. It's breaking your fast. Um, but, but we're going to extend it a little bit. And I want you to really try to get to at least 12 hours, but up to 16 hours, which is basically skipping breakfast or skipping dinner. And I want you to do this at least four days a week. And I want you to do it intentionally, not just, I forgot to eat. No, I'm choosing not to eat. And you're going to feel hungry. You might feel a little woozy, like low blood sugar kind of feeling. Um, but what's going to happen is if you go a, a period of time and you're stretching yourself into a, a range of discomfort, what you're doing is allowing your body to get the benefits of fasting. And one of the big benefits is it cleans out the body. It, it extracts gunk and it gets it out of the body. And so detoxification is one of the best benefits of fasting. But we're not doing long fasts where you're going days just drinking water and, eat, and, and not eating anything just these short amount of time. Uh, so f at least four days a week and striving for at least 12 hours at a time. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to notice your energy bump and bump and bump and bump up. And because you're getting rid of the toxins too, that are these obstacles, it's going to be very easy to shed weight. It's also very easy to exercise when your energy is higher. And so everything starts spiraling upward instead of everything spiraling downward and your health starts failing, you're going to spiral upward and you're going to start to get the benefits of this. So there's a couple reasons why I want you to do this. Number one, um, I know um, that you, you desire to be healthier and, but you need some small wins. And so these are, these are some baby steps in the right direction where you can go, Oh my gosh, that worked. And it's consistent in, in how it works because it follows the rules of anatomy and physiology. It follows the principles. It's not just Dr. Chris's new method. No, we're applying the way the body functions, the way the brain functions, the way the digestive system functions. We're applying those rules to a practical application. And it, you can't help but get, but get benefit out of this. You can't help but get healthier. And um, quite honestly, most of the time, if there's excess weight, you can't help but get leaner. It's very natural. Um, the second part of it is this, if this little bit works, how much more do you think you can get out of the health of your body? If you apply the principles across all six pillars. Okay. So I'm giving you some small wins so you can trust me a little bit because I've been teaching this stuff for 11 years. I don't teach stuff that doesn't work. 
I don't teach stuff that doesn't have practical application, and I don't teach stuff that's going to waste your time. So the 30-day Dream Health Bootcamp, guess what? That is all practical learning. It's literally 30 days. And so um, part of what we're having in it is we're going to have some fitness plans. We're going to have some nutritional um, recommendations. You will not get a diet plan. I will not give you one. I'm going to give you the rules and the principles, and you're going to have to stick within the rules and the principles. And if you mess up, you bear the consequence of it. You do. I'm not going to. You are because you're the one choosing it. You're putting it in your mouth, and you're the one going to get the consequence. So if you choose well, eat well, you're going to get um, a healthy benefit, and you're going to love that consequence. But if you choose poorly, act on that poor choice, you're going to get a consequence you don't like. And the more you experience negative consequences, the more you're going to go, I don't like this anymore. So we're not going to buffer the consequences. We're going to apply it. We're going to feel it. And we're going to get the change. Um, there's 12, 12 webinars inside um, uh, the boot camp, and it's going to be three a week for four weeks. Okay, this is like getting getting into a college course, except it's 20 times more practical than any college course you've ever been through or high school course or anything like that. Um, but the one thing I ask is that people commit. Um, there is going to be a fee for it. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, we are partnering up with St. Pete Running Company. We're partnering up with Berg CrossFit. And we're going to be partnering up with some other companies as well. Um, it's funny. They all get nervous when they work together because they, they're like, all right. Are we all competing against each other? I can't tell. And I said, no, we're changing the community. We're going to change people's lives. We're going to change families. We're going to change what they know and understand. And we're going to, um, uh, we're going to, we're going to really make uh, a big difference. And so we're going to get the word out. When I send the replay, when I send this information, um, I want you to share it. I want you to share it because you care about people. I want you to challenge them to apply this. I want you to challenge them to get some small wins here. And then I want you to, you to challenge them to step it up a notch and, and go for, for something um, uh, much more significant because I'm, I'm telling you, you jam pack everything I'm going to teach into a 30 day period. You will never, ever think the same way again. And you're going to love it. You're going to love it but I won't, I will not do excuses. I'm not going to entertain complaining. I'm not. I, now, if it's a legitimate concern, of course, I'm going to answer questions because I want you to learn, but just complaints. We're not doing that. Okay. Um, we're going to learn to accept responsibility and understand consequences and help it shape our changes. So we move in the right direction. Um, and then that, that should really propel you to to a lifetime of enjoying a much much healthier body with not a lot of work i mean like quite honestly i skip meals all the time i skip meals all the time sometimes i work out intensely sometimes i don't now i would love to do it better but i never freak out when i go through like short seasons where i can't apply um all of the physical discipline that i'd like to or if i can't fully saturate my body every single day because i've been working on it and i I, I um, focus on it on a regular basis. So I have a lot of wiggle room and tolerance to still maintain a healthy body without that. Um, I, I've been, I've been much larger than I am, you know, over in the military, extreme physical discipline, but my nutrition was terrible. I've been in, in places where, you know, emo I was an emotional train wreck, but because I took care of physical discipline and I took care of, um, nutritional saturation uh, uh, because I stayed chemically um, pure um, as best as I possibly could. I could weather those seasons much better because the pillars support one another. And so when you're weak in one area, the strength of the others actually keeps you up. It's, it's quite amazing. And so, um, yeah, I just encourage you to stay tuned. Please come out to St. Pete Running Company um, this, uh, this Saturday. It'll be... November 14th um, at 8.30 a.m. Hold on. I Hold on. I have it up right here. I don't want to give you bad information. 8.30 a.m. at St. Pete Running Company. Um, we're going to learn about some of the fitness basics, redefining fitness, and, um, and we're going to go for a run, so bring your running shoes, and it'll be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for sticking around. If you have any questions, uh, please send me questions. If if this is a replay and you're watching the replay, um, send me questions um, at Dr. C. Slinninger at PierceClinicStateP.com. Dr. C. Slinninger at PierceClinic 
stpete.com or or um oh i also have dr chris at dr chris slinninger.com which that website dr chris slinninger.com is going to uh, become a centerpiece for a lot of this content uh i might actually start blogging which i dread but i'm gonna do it um basically i want to make uh that thing ha ah, jesse face max saturday uh if you want to i'm not doing it because I told Dawn this. I I have an immune system. It's a better. It's better than a face mask. And if somebody wants to play games, well, have fun. Wear a face mask if you want to. I'm not. Um, but it's it's because I understand the strength of my body, and that's part of why we're doing this. Is because there's a a lot of ignorance about how strong your body actually is. Um, you have inside of you something so much stronger than a face mask. Gosh, they're they're talking. About about a, a vaccine that's 90 percent effective and they're going yay listen you you have a 99.99 percent chance of recovering from coronavirus which means this vaccine is literally 10 percent less effective than what you have inside your body already with as with how unhealthy this country is it's insane it's insane so there is no reason to wear a I know, we're already done with the webinar. I'm just answering your question. There is no point in wearing a face mask if you're trying to protect yourself when your protection is so effective on the inside, even if you were sick. I mean, I, I'll, I could prove it. I could go eat Twinkies for three days and then go hug some sick people. And guess what? I'm still going to kick that virus's butt because I took care of myself. I'm not scared of that. And, but but the thing is, is everybody turned it into, I'm doing this for you. Well, guess what? I'm doing the boot camp for everybody so that they can learn why I don't care. Because then they'll be so strong and so confident, they won't care. So that's what I'm doing for the community. It's not a face mask. It's a boot camp. All right? So in, encourage people to come out. Invite them out. It's going to be a ton of fun. St. Pete Running Company is going to be out there. I think they're also having like an expo th this weekend. It should it should be a party. It's going to be fun. Come out. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. I, you know, I probably shouldn't say this officially to not wear a face mask. So I'm not going to tell you not to wear a face mask, but you get the consequences of your actions. That's what I'll tell you. And I'll get the consequences of mine. Anyway, have a great night. If you have any questions, um, again, uh, link below. Um, uh, if you're watching a replay uh, or I gave you my email addresses. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Oh, but, um, quick question before you sign off. Was this helpful? And do you like the context in which it's taught? Was this helpful? And do you did you enjoy the context that it was taught? We had like 15 people signed up for this, but I don't know if people like lost power or anything like that. So I will get this out to everybody who registered and I'll get you the assessments. I'm so sorry. I will get you the assessments. Okay. Cool. Awesome, Don. Yeah, the pillars. Uh, yeah, we, Dawn, I think we've covered every pillar about a million times over. And um, yeah, it's it's everything we talked about, but it's you, you can see it in these anchor points and you can start to um, uh, really get a better understanding of where you're strong and where you're weak. And I bet while as you're looking at those pillars, you're like, all right, I know what I need to work on. But you also know the ones you're strong in and, and you can be even stronger in those and work on the weak ones with some vigor. All right. Anyway, um, stay dry. Hope everything goes well with this hurricane coming in. Um, and uh, hopefully hopefully we come out of it tomorrow with uh, everything fully intact. I don't think it's going to be too bad, but you never know. All right. Well, have a good night. Thanks so much for, for your time and attention. No excuses, no complaining, and no living below your potential. <laughs>